محمد رسول الله محمد رسول الله أرجو رضاك يا الله أنت الرحيم يا الله تبني عطاك يا الله أنت الكريم منك العطاء يا الله أنت العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, welcome back Another episode of the inner dimensions of worship Now after prostration we come for a sitting So between the two prostrations there is a sitting Now when we come up from the prostration and we sit Again this is another moment of hope, humility Asking Allah for forgiveness Rabbi ghafirli We say, oh my Lord, forgive me This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say During this Again brothers and sisters Fill your heart with the hope and the expectation That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will forgive you Knowing that however great and however many your sins Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is entirely able to forgive your sins. Indeed, He loves forgiveness. He is the forgiving and He loves forgiveness. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you with real sincerity like you mean it. And then again, of course, one goes back into prostration for the second time, renewing that position of humility and of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is one unit of the prayer and of course different prayers are divided into different units the benefit of this brothers and sisters is that by repeating these units of prayer alhamdulillah we have many opportunities depending on the time of day of course for fajr it's two rakah for dhuhr and asr it's four for maghrib it's three again for isha it's four but we always have an opportunity that if we became forgetful or we were distracted subhanallah we have another opportunity to refocus to recommit ourselves to this conscious reverence and awe and hope and shame that we should feel when we are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making our salah so let us now talk about the tashahud and let's go through the tashahud and discuss some aspects of its meaning the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would sit and he would place his right palm on his right thigh and his left palm on his left thigh and in one narration on the knee so whether it's on the thigh or on the knee and he would spread his fingers slightly and he would put his right elbow the end of his elbow on the thigh so that his arm would be resting on his thigh and one of the subhanallah the things the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us is to point in some narrations point vigorously some say move the finger in the tashahud the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it, it's narrated that he would supplicate with the tashahud he would supplicate with it and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by the way you're pointing with this finger and also he would sometimes join his fingers like that. So sometimes he would just point with the finger. Sometimes he would join these fingers like that. And he would raise it. And the Prophet wasallam said, This is more powerful against a sh than an iron bar. MashaAllah. So Alhamdulillah, this is something that we should do in our prayer. Alhamdulillah. And that is when we are saying the tashahud. So, what does it mean? lillahi. Okay, there's by the way quite a few different ways of reciting the tashahud. There's not just one way, there's about four or five different ways, different variations. All of them, alhamdulillah, perfectly acceptable. They're just slight variations, they don't differ that much, but the basic meaning of it is the same. Okay, so all compliments, blessed words, prayers and pure words are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what are we doing? We are declaring that all the prayers, the meaning of at-tahiyat is everything that is good. 
everything that is good. So all of our good deeds, all of our prayers, all of our supplications, at-tahiyyatu lillahi, they are all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an important time, once again, to remind ourselves of the importance of ikhlas, the importance of sincerity, ikhlas, that we are doing everything purely and sincerely and completely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That all of these good things are not so that we can have fame or reputation, rather these things are, my brothers and sisters, so they are solely and completely to be done for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the meaning, at-tahiyyatu lillahi. All of these good things that we do, the at-tahiyyat, they are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa-tayyibat. And so, again, these are the good things, the good speeches, the good work, wa salawat, and the prayers, all the prayer is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what we are saying in the tashahud. And then, subhanallah, assalamu ala nabi. So we are sending salams upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'll talk about that later. And then also we are sending salams upon all the righteous slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of the ibad, the salihin, the righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And according to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this includes every righteous slave in the heaven and the earth. So it includes the angels, it includes all, subhanallah, all of the righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a very beautiful thing, brothers and sisters, because what we should bear in mind again, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many of his creatures that worship him and praise him and glorify him. You are not alone as a worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of those righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as if they are a brotherhood, they are subhanallah, almost like a one family of creatures who are glorifying and praising and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this moment, you are sending greetings upon all of them. What does this mean? SubhanAllah, we are asking Allah and making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of them. That Allah's peace and security and blessings and mercy and forgiveness are bestowed upon all of these righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this tashahud, mashallah, is a very, very powerful type of dua that we are making to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, of course, we take the shahada. We reaffirm this testimony of faith. Ashhadu. I bear witness. Implicit in this, my brothers and sisters, you only bear witness to something that you have knowledge of, that you have understanding of. You can be a witness to something that even if you don't see it, but you comprehend it, you understand it with knowledge. And it implies certainty and conviction. And also bearing witness to it means that you are going to be true to it and commit yourself to it. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. There is no ilah, there is no deity, there is no God that is worthy of worship. This is what is implied. Because there are, of course, many things that people worship. Many idols, many things which people put their faith and their hope and their trust. Anything really which a person believes is going to give them what they want and give them what they need. This is their ilah, this is their God. But we are saying, La ilaha illallah. That really, in reality, nothing has the true power to give us what we want and what we need except Allah. So we are singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the statement of Tawheed, the very essence of Islam, that we are singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for worship. And we know the virtues of La ilaha illallah, that whoever testifies sincerely from their heart that Allah alone 
is worthy of worship, then subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden the hell of fire for them. That paradise will be theirs. So we are reaffirming here, brothers and sisters, this testimony of faith every time in our salah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. There is nothing, nothing that is worthy of worship except Allah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. So we are also testifying Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he is the messenger of Allah. This also means something. It's not just recognizing a historical fact or recognizing that Muhammad is a prophet. Just like testifying to the oneness of Allah doesn't mean I just recognize that Allah exists. No, a lot more is implied in that. And what is implied in that, we'll talk about after the break, insha'Allah. Truth is hidden, and misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik every Saturday to Thursday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Let's come under the shade of the scholars. So the issue is a problem of knowledge. Asim Al-Hakim. Why do people do bidah? Imam Malik said whoever claims there is a good innovation in the deen. Salim Al-Amri. He is accusing that Prophet Muhammad did not convey the message. Dr. Mamduh Muhammad. If you know that the Prophet ﷺ did something and I do something else, you have to follow the Prophet ﷺ. Don't follow me. Abdul Rahim Makati. But if each one believes his goal is to please Allah, to follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Abdul Rahim Green. I think this really is to do with your internal state. Where does the Quran and Sunnah point to? Muhammad al Sharif. We have to follow what Allah and His Messenger said. Let's imbibe from these scholars the fruitful solutions for the problems of the world. Which one we would take and which one we would leave? Question to every Muslim. To every Muslim. In the shade of the scholars. Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Welcome back. We're talking about. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. What is implied by that? What is implied by saying Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah is not only a recognition of the fact that the Prophet is a messenger, but that you are going to follow him. 
Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran that He did not send a messenger except to be obeyed. So the point is, is that we should obey Allah and His Messenger. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu atiyu allaha wa atiyu rasul. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger. So obeying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following him, following his sunnah, this is what is implied by Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. So then after that, we begin to make salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, what does it mean asking salawat upon the Prophet? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. What is this? A salawat upon the Prophet actually mean. Often you find it translated as peace and blessings upon the Prophet or praise upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. So, not only the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but also the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the family of the Prophet also means the true followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyone who is truly a follower of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is included in this. And then also, subhanallah, we are also asking for the salawat to be on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the salawat to be upon Ibrahim alayhi salam and the family of Ibrahim. Kama salaita Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. So why Ibrahim alayhi salam? Why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Ibrahim? First of all, it is subhanAllah something we should note that from the family of Ibrahim there were many, many prophets. So both the sons of Ibrahim alayhi salam were prophets. Ishaq alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam, both of them were prophets. And from Ishaq there was Ya'aqub, who was also a prophet. And from Ya'aqub there was Yusuf, who was also a prophet. And indeed all of the prophets of Bani Israel are descended from that lineage. So subhanAllah, look at how subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the family of Ibrahim and caused Ibrahim alayhi salam to be mentioned and honored in this life and the next. And Ibrahim, my brothers and sisters, is a type of, subhanAllah, Allah shows him as this paradigm, this example of someone who has submitted himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the story of Ibrahim is the most amazing story also of da'wah, of someone who is inviting and calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling the people to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone for worship. So we should be calling to mind and remembering all of this when we are making this beautiful salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Subhanallah, remembering the blessing Subhanahu wa Taala had given to Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim, and this is also reminding us, brothers and sisters, of the virtues and the consequences of following the path of righteousness. We are recalling history, how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has honoured someone, and if you think about Ibrahim alayhi salam, that there was a time when it is said that he was the only believer on the earth. He was the only person who had singled out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for worship. Look how he stood against his people. Just one man inviting all of his people to Islam. Look at this courage and this conviction. Yet, do we know the names of anybody from that time? Do we know the name of the ruler of Ibrahim's people? Do we know the names of these people? Do we know who they were? I'm sure they had singers and actors just like there are singers and actors today but who remembers their names who remembers their songs but we do remember ibrahim alayhi salam look how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored ibrahim when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told ibrahim alayhi salam to call the people to hajj it was just him ibrahim standing in the desert calling the people to hajj and look today Look today, my brothers and sisters, millions and millions of people come from all over the earth 
responding to that call that Ibrahim salam, made those thousands of years ago. Look at the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to this messenger of Allah. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors throughout the ages his righteous servants and the honor that they will get is even greater and is even more on the day of judgment. So we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to honor the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to give him also this type of honor, this type of quality for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family just as we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had honored Ibrahim. Of course the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Khatam al nabiyyin He is the seal of the messengers. There will be no more messengers and no more prophets after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even Isa ibn Maryam of course when he returns he will not come back in the capacity of a prophet. He will come back as a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he will lead the Muslims in that capacity. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he's the seal of the messengers. So subhanAllah when we are saying that the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should send peace and blessings and salawat and mention and honor the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the way that, that Ibrahim was honored and his family was honored the exception here is there are no more prophets after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the descendants of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will not have that status of being prophets. But alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this ummah scholars. They are the inheritors of the prophets. In our ummah, they are the inheritors of the prophets. They carry the task and fulfill the task of passing on the message, of calling the people, Remind the people of what is a sirat al mustaqim Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unlike every other scripture, He has preserved the Qur'an. The Qur'an is the final revelation. Muhammad is the last of the Prophet. So when we are saying also, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, that is implicit as well. That He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He is Khatim al Nabi and He is the seal of the messengers. So that is something that is very, very important, my brothers and sisters. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is saying in the Qur'an, Allah sends His salams upon the Prophet or His salah upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and His angels too. So, O oh you who believe, send your salah upon Him and subhanAllah, this means ostensibly that subhanAllah when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was alive, that they would greet him with assalamu alaikum but we still send our salams upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now the beautiful thing is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that whoever says salams upon me whoever sends salams upon me then i will return the salams to them okay so subhanallah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the earth does not consume the bodies of the prophet it is mentioned that your salams are conveyed to me. He doesn't actually hear our salams himself, but according to one narration, it is the angels that pass on those salams to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he responds to us. So I want you to think about that, brothers. I want you to think about that, sisters, that when you are sending salams and salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when you're sending these salams upon the Prophet, the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam these salams are being conveyed to him. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is replying subhanallah to those salams. What a beautiful thing to think about our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responding to our salams.